Hi, everyone. And for week 13 of my No Buy Year, we're doing another epic list of things I wanted to buy but didn't for the month of March. So it's that time again. This is probably going to be a lot longer than I intend for it to be, so grab a drink, get cozy, or set up some housework, and let's get into it. Apologies for my voice, I'm getting over a cold, but the benefit of YouTube is that I can talk to you without any fear of a contagious cold going across the interwebs and infecting people, um, but I can still have this little bit of social time with you. So firstly, I want to rapid fire through those items that have been on the list, some of them since January, and are still on the list and probably going to get carried forward to April. So the first item here is the pink MEJ claw clip. I have a renewed interest in this now because I have been wearing the metal one, and I've also been wearing my hair up in a ponytail more. And I discover that when I wear it in a regular elastic tie, I get headaches or tension like you know, where your hair gets pulled too much, I get sore spots on my head just because I have so much hair. So the claw clip alleviates that a little bit, but because my MEJ clip is the metal version, it is a little bit heavy and it still kind of creates sore spots. So I have this idea that the plastic lightweight version will alleviate some of those issues, both because the claw clips in general are less sore than the elastics and because the plastic will be lighter than the metal one. The next item is still that Skin Fix Barrier Moisturizer Cream. It's just the next moisturizer I want to try on my list when I've used up everything that I currently have. But judging from the pace that I'm currently using up the things that I do have, it's probably going to be not until next year that I need a new moisturizer. Just because it takes me over a month to use a small sample size. And I have maybe three kind of sample sized moisturizers on the go right now. Plus a full size that's maybe half full of the Honest Hydrogel Cream. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's next year before I'm purchasing a new moisturizer. Next is that Marc Jacobs Daisy perfume in the mini size. I'm getting more and more conflicted on this one because I never wear perfume. And I got the Sol de Janeiro, Sol de Janeiro, I'm sorry about the pronunciation, body spray in the mini set for my birthday. And I even find that that body spray is too overpowering for me to wear. So I like the scent that the lotion leaves and that's the scent level that I like. Very light, very... Uh, unobtrusive, but I don't like having a spray on and then perfume is like a next level up from a body spray. So I don't even see myself wearing a perfume even on days that I don't have work. So problem number one is I rarely leave the house unless it's for work and I can't wear perfume at work because I'm on stage in an orchestra and it's against contract policy to have scented products because if everybody did that, it would be just a huge cloud of suffocating aroma. And the second problem is that I find it a little overpowering. So this might actually get removed from my list. I still have that tiny sample of Marc Jacobs Daisy. So if I ever want to smell like that or just smell it, I still have access to it. So I don't know. If the sample runs out, maybe I'll find myself with a little itch of like, ooh, what does that smell like? Maybe I want that mini bottle and it is cute for my bathroom counter. But I just don't know about this one. I'll, I'll keep it on the list for now. Um, the minis are like $30. So again, good Christmas stocking stuffer or small gift price point. The next item is the Apple AirPod Maxes. I'm definitely waiting until they release whatever new version they have. So this one's got a pin put in it. I have some headphones that do work. They're those Sony ones that I talked about last time. And I'm just curious to see what the new iteration of these have. I'm certainly not going to be buying any of these before whatever updates have been done. Next item is those Heaven Mayhem Mixed Metal Knot earrings. Still kind of want those. Still like the mixed metal, still like the look of these. I haven't checked in on these, so I don't know if they're still being made and in stock. Okay, I do see that the Mini Knot and Mixed Metal is still on their website. So I don't really feel like they would be gone by Christmas time. And if they are, I'll find some Mixed Metal alternative. The next item is that Badlands Crew Neck Sweatshirt. And I have an update on this one because this is like perhaps the only item on this list or maybe one of the couple of items that the specific item is quite important for, right? It's not just the crew neck sweatshirt in a cream color that I want, even with a brown graphic. It's that exact sweatshirt with the Badlands and the Buffalo and the design that goes all the way around. So when I laid out my no buy rules, I had a Mother's Day caveat. The plan for Mother's Day was to go to a Lululemon store 
and experience the try on and the shopping, you know, with my husband and kids maybe, but also get some exercise wear that I would wear frequently over the summer running outside or possibly going to the gym. So the Lululemon plan kind of got canceled because they stopped making the jacket in the color that I was going to get. So I was going to get the lavender defined jacket and they don't produce it anymore. So I'm looking for that one second hand. And the other item on my Lululemon wish list was the, like, what is it called? Never lost key ring or something like that. It's like a ribbon. We went into store because my husband was looking for some running shorts and um, I wasn't, no shopping for me. It was just for him. While we were there, I took a look at those key rings and those ribbons are massive. And I had no idea that they were so big. I have a key ring. I wanted to replace it with like a slightly smaller ribbon, but the ribbon is massive. So that's a no go. And I'm also kind of feeling eh about having a big Lululemon on my keys. So that's kind of a bullet that I dodged, I guess, because the ribbon was too big. Anyway, so that's not happening. What might happen instead is that I get this sweatshirt and call it the Mother's Day gift. And I think that would be an okay substitution, especially since this is a specific instance where the item itself is something that I would like and I would be sad if it was sold out. I kept in the gift giving occasions for my no buy year at the very beginning. And we took a road trip to the Badlands in South Dakota last year with my kids and I. So I do still feel like that could be part of the memory, which is what Mother's Day is about, in my opinion, is like memories with your kids. So I kind of feel like that could be part of the memory side of Mother's Day. So you might disagree, but I think this is going to become a substitution for the jackets. I'm still possibly going to get the jackets if I see them on the secondhand market and more on that later. Anyway, I know this is like huge gray area. So I'm just human. <laughs> I'm just talking you through the things that I wanted to buy. And I guess in this case, things I wanted to buy and maybe did, but somebody is going to buy this for me. So take it as you will. Uh, I still have those sunglasses on my list. Um, some of the trendier shapes of sunglasses. It's just, again, a placeholder for something to maybe look into after my no buy. I still have the pink Vivea square toe heel slides on my list. I do like these more and more. So the more I think about them and look at them, I do like them and I think I would wear them and I think I would wear them more than the slides that I have in my closet right now. I have some kind of basket weave slides with a citrus heel, it's like a lemon. And I don't wear them very much because I find them hard to pair with my outfits. So the plan is to really try to wear those this summer and see if the slide style is comfortable, is gonna have proof of concept basically going forward and to maybe keep these as a Christmas list item. I still have the Casio watch on my list. So like the $20 metal watch, I don't know. Again, it's not something I need and I just kind of want it a little bit for the look. I don't know. I can't explain all of my whims and fancies, all right? The YSL eyeshadow quad is still on the list. Again, it might make a good stocking stuff or might replace the naked palette. It might just be a nice luxurious version of something I already use. This is interesting because I took this blue button down off of my list originally in February, and then I put it back on in March. So I saw another YouTuber, her name is Jenny Mustard. She's like a Scandi kind of, she talks about minimalism and also simple living and fashion. Um, I really love her style and I saw her wearing like an oversized cobalt blue button down. And um, <laughs> I really love the look on her. And I do think that she and I have similar builds. So like she's also tall and thin and, you know, kind of small chested. And I like how she styles her clothes and how she looks. And because of her similar body type, I can have more confidence that her style will also suit me. And the cobalt blue is one of my core wardrobe colors. So I just put this back on the list. I would love to thrift one of these next year. I'm not looking for any cobalt blue button, button ups or button downs because I don't want to be tempted. So I'm not going into any thrift stores or anything like that, but I think this is something I could probably find in a thrift store and I would love to find in real life so I could try it on. That mystery themed jigsaw puzzle grounds for murder is still on the list. I really think this is probably gonna be a Christmas gift for a teenager in my life because it's something that we could do together and do as a family and probably have a good time doing. So hopefully that person is not watching any of my videos. I highly doubt it. Next is the And Other Stories belt with a sculptural buckle. Now this has actually gone out of stock. 
And I had a momentary twinge of like, oh no, that belt that I wanted is no longer available because I do think it would suit my style and look good with a lot of my outfits. And I like the sculptural wavy leather buckle and I haven't seen anything similar. Do I need a belt? Not really. I don't have a black belt that's big enough to go around the hips. I have one for the waist area and I do wear it, especially a lot for work when I'm performing it like creates a nice piece of like waist jewelry, especially because I can't wear like big necklaces to play my instrument. I have some belts that do work around the hips, even if they're not black and even if they don't have that square sculptural buckle. I do notice that when I see pictures of influencers or other models with a belt that has that square buckle, I want this more. So it's interesting to just feel it happening in real time when I see like there was this one picture of Matilda Jerf with the like all black outfit with like a YSL belt with a square buckle. I saw that and I was like, ooh, that looks like that sculptural buckle belt that I had on my wish list. Except the sculptural one is more me because it's a little more artistic and less flat and minimal. So I still like this item, but it's not available for me to purchase anymore. So I don't know, I'm a little sad, but at the same time, it's not specific enough for me to be like devastated over it. And again, Relatively speaking, right? The devastation over not buying something is not the same as like true devastation. So please take that with a grain of salt. And I think at this point we've reached the Tibby Sid jeans, which are still on my list. But I have like a laundry list of things to do to kind of test out the proof of concept. And also like whether or not I have items that give this vibe in my wardrobe. So the first thing I want to do is to recreate all the outfits the models are wearing with jeans or perhaps the jean maxi skirt that I already have. So I'm hopefully gonna make a video on that maybe in the next month. And then the other thing I wanna do is find a way to try these on. So I am very suspicious that these jeans are gonna be a little short. It looks like the inseam is 31 inches and my ideal straight jeans inseam I think is like 33, 34 inches. And these are not straight, they're slightly barrel legged so maybe a little bit shorter is okay. They also might be worn lower on the waist and my straight jeans are high-waisted. So it might still work out, but I just can't do jeans that are too short. So that would be like an easy way for them to take themselves off my list. Okay, now we're reaching some other jeans. And part of this started because I saw a like trend article on like things for spring. And one of those, one of those items in the article was indigo dark denim. And I don't have any indigo dark denim. And I do actually really like the vibe it gives because it is very put together, right? It's almost like a black, but it's still dark blue rather than black. And I've already said in previous videos, I don't love wearing black because I wear it so much for my job. So it feels like I'm going to a gig or working. So the dark blue, I think would be a, a good color for me. I do have other navy blue pieces that I love. And I think it suits me, my high contrast. It's like an alternative to black. So I saw these linked in that article from Koss, the column jeans that are straight. The inseam on these is way too short for straight jeans for me. So this is just a placeholder. It's not that I want this exact item. Um, so indigo jeans. I also saw this picture of this woman in flare jeans with a shirt that says peachy on it. I think I'm putting them up here. And my husband had made a comment way back about how he liked jeans that were tighter on the butt and thigh area. And it didn't matter really what the bottom was like. So they could be skinny jeans or they could be like flares like this. And so I have some of these on my wish list. And it was actually in my no buy exceptions around like November Black Friday time that I could go shopping and try on some jeans with my husband. And if he liked any and I liked any and thought I would actually wear them, we could buy them for Christmas. So possibly in Black Friday sales. And I'm wondering if that could be an indigo jean uh, substitute or again, I'm not exactly sure. They look pretty dark indigo. But without seeing them in person, it's kind of hard to know if that's what I'm looking for. I'm also really unsure about the shape because they feel pretty dated to me, if I'm honest. When I look at these pictures, I'm like, they look like they're from a certain era. And I'm just not sure if I'm willing to like step into that era as far as my outfits. So ironically, I wanted to, <laughs> quick tangent. Um, I was going through March, right? And I was going to work a lot. Went back to work, had a ton of extra stuff. And... I thought, wow, there's nothing on my wish list for March. I'm not going to have a things I wanted to buy but didn't video. And, you know, we're like two weeks in, halfway through the month. I was like, oh, man, I, I don't know. The video is going to be really short. I guess that's good because it shows I'm making progress in my no buy. But 
alas, <laughs> then the deluge of things started assaulting me, mainly from social media. Um, and I saw these mini Trader Joe's tote bags and the, the videos about the hype, right? People grabbing five and, you know, reselling them or whatever. They're $2.99 and I guess they're on eBay for hundreds of dollars. And I did have the fleeting impulse of like, oh my gosh, those are so cute. I want one for myself. So I put them on this list. I'm not going to buy one. I don't need a mini tote bag, but um, I just, because of that feeling, I was like, I need to put this on this list and talk about it and just demonstrate how easy it is to fall into that trap of like, oh my gosh, everyone's going crazy over these. They're cute. I want one. It's crazy. I didn't know this existed. I didn't have a mini tote bag on my list of wants in any remote sense. So yeah, I'm just, social media is getting me. Social media has been getting me. I could do a massive list of things that I've been influenced to buy. And that is on my list of videos to do, but I think it's going to be a monster because it's just so many things. So I might have to separate into categories and all that. It'll probably come much later in the year. Okay. Again, I saw some of these quilted vests probably on social media is like spring trends quilting and they are very, very cute but I think they are not even remotely my style. They're just so unique in a way that I think would make them not practical in my wardrobe. My compromise with myself to like stop myself from further browsing and wanting these is to tell myself, hey, this is something you can make. This is a quilted vest. So like the whole point is it's mismatched scraps of fabric. If you really want a quilted jacket, I keep saying vest, sorry. If you really want a quilted jacket, go to the thrift store, buy some old shirts or old fabric and quilt it yourself. Learn how to do that. You can hand sew it. I don't have a sewing machine right now, but I know how to hand sew. And if I really want that, it can be a project and I can buy the materials, not this year, but you know, next year and do that. And then it's got the extra cool factor of having made it by your own hand and using materials that are not like you're not contributing to the creation of new clothes either through like fast fashion and the horrible practices that go along with it or even sustainable brands. But it's just new clothes are not something the world needs right now. Certainly not in the quantities that they're being produced. I am all for creativity and fashion and artists and all that, but something's got to give and consumers have to vote with our dollar basically. So anyway, <laughs> I told myself if, if I want that, I've got to make it. Ah, so I have, <laughs> there's one regret from things that I've decluttered and sold, and that is my dad sandals. I had some black, I don't know if they were real or faux leather, dad sandals. I think the brand was aerosols. So they're like a dupe for the Chanel black dad sandals. But my husband hated these things so much, but I kind of regret it because I feel like they are my kind of weird, quirky aesthetic. And the black sandals are something I don't have. So like the heaviness on the bottom, I guess is what they give outfits. And I don't know, I still kind of want a pair. So I saw these Birkenstock Mogami Terra sandals and they're also, they also have the added benefit of being waterproof, right? So they're kind of like Tevas or Crocs or something like that, like the, the waterproof version. If they could be worn like to work with a styled outfit because they're black, then I would be interested in these. I'm gonna see how I feel over the summer if I have other sandal options. I do have white Crocs and I have those nicer white sandals that my husband got me. And I don't, even though they just don't have the vibe of the chunky black dad sandals, they probably could be worn in every outfit that I would put the black ones with. So I don't know, definitely not a need. It's just a styling want and a decluttering regret. Okay, this next item is interesting because I was influenced by somebody in real life. So I've seen these puffy cloud bags all over social media, right? All over TikTok. And I thought like, nah, not my style. I mean, I like bags and that one's unique, but like a little bit interested, but not enough to actually want it. And I saw it on a girl in the Lululemon when we were there, my husband, and her outfit was so cool. She had on like wire glasses, gold frames, baseball cap, oversized vest, and a, a shirt, t-shirt, I think underneath and like baggy jeans and this cloud bag. And I was like, oh no, now I want it. Now I want it, I wanna dupe that vibe. Um, I could probably dupe the vibe with my baggy crescent bag, the shoulder bag, but I don't know, just something about how big and puffy and cloud-like that white bag was. The vibe of that girl's outfit is just living rent-free in my mind. So I do still want this. 
Okay, so now we're reaching more of the indigo denim items that I wanted. So I saw that the Sid jeans came in indigo, but Tibby also has other jean styles. So the carpenter jeans in indigo and then the Brancusi jeans in indigo have both made this list. The carpenter jeans, I don't actually like the shape of that much now that I look back. I certainly don't prefer them over the Sids or the Brancusis. I don't think I would get the Sid jeans in the dark indigo because the shape and the paneling is not as obvious. And the point of the indigo is kind of to be a little more streamlined. So the Brancusis are now like the front runner of indigo jeans in my mind. So they're gonna be carried over as like a need to try these on. Suspicious that they're gonna be too short, but then they are ankle tight at the ankle. So maybe the shorter length would be okay. I don't know. I had a very close call with these Tibby Brancusi jeans because they had their spring sale or whatever. And these are normally like $360 jeans and they were down to 116 or something like that. And they did have what appeared to be my size for a hot second. So I saw them and obviously I'm on a no buy, so I didn't buy them and I waited and they sold out in the size that I would order. And then they still had them in a size or two smaller than I would probably order. But like I can still kind of fit into that size. I just don't like my clothes to be that tight. So I was like, uh oh, I'm super tempted. And then they did like an extra 10% or 15% off of the sale. So they would have been like 90 something dollars but they would be final sale, which was kind of the nail in the coffin of like, okay, it's easy to not buy these or easy to not buy these because I couldn't return them. And I have never tried on this style and it looks like kind of a polarizing style. Like either it's gonna work for you or not. And the issue with the length might be pretty bad with these. So like if they're too short, they might just look stupid. So I just really need to try these on before even considering buying them. And it would be worth paying the extra, the extra $200 if they're 360 instead of 100 and whatever to be sure that they would be the right pair. Because if I end up spending $116 and they don't work, then I've wasted $116 and I haven't saved any money by getting them on sale. That's always the mantra to remember, right? Like you get something 50% off, you're not actually saving 50%, you're spending 50% of whatever it costs, so you're still spending money. It's just perspective, I guess. The next item is the Jerf Avenue pajamas in fruit print. So I already had these in the berry and I just started wearing them and unexpectedly they've become like the front runner of my favorite pajamas and my husband does prefer them too over the print fresh cotton poplin ones that I have. And the cotton is really good for winter, right? So it's not like I would get rid of the pajamas that I have, I have two sets of those but I feel like I might benefit from having two sets of the Jerf Avenue ones too. So like one in berry and one in fruit. And then I would be like, okay, I'm set for pajamas. I know this is a trap, right? The, the whole idea of like, oh, once I get this pair, I'll be set. I'll have the numbers that I need. My pajama collection is complete. But uh, I do feel like two of each of those would be nice. Cause then I would be able to alternate when it's hot between the berries and the long pants. I do actually have the Jerf Avenue in shorts. So I have the short and t-shirts version as well. So those are like super summery and like the pants version is like a good middle ground of like having the long sleeves and the pants. So I would have in total two sets of the print fresh, two sets of the shorts and t-shirt. And if I got these fruit ones, I'd have two sets of the like mid-level warmth scale, long pants and long shirt, but in light, lighter weight material. Um, does anybody need six pairs of pajamas? Not really. I know a lot of people just sleep in old clothes or old t-shirts or even naked, but I do really like having nice pajamas. So again, this is just going to stay floating on the wish list. I don't feel urgency about it. I'm not going to be like devastated if they sell out and I don't get the second pair. I prefer the Barry's print anyway, and I definitely have enough pajamas to wear. I'm not like, oh, I don't have any. This is a need. No, it's not. I saw that silver shoes were trending and these were on one of those articles, I think again, of like spring trends. And I momentarily wanted them. So there's two models actually that I'm kind of interested in, not currently, but was at the time. So there's these loafers from Dolce Vita um, with the distressed silver leather. And then the Oxford Brogues from Julia Bow. And I look at these now and I remember why I wasn't that interested in the metallics trend to begin with because I think a lot of times it can look cheap and I don't mean that in a bad way, but like 
I guess to me, it's not something I feel like I need to add to my wardrobe through clothing. I feel like metallics can come through jewelry and not look cheap. Maybe it's the styling that sometimes, I don't know, whatever it is, sometimes I feel like it looks a little off to have the silver shiny shoes. And I do have a pair of white sneakers with silver accents and maybe that can deliver enough of the little metallic nod to satisfy the silver need in my wardrobe or, you know, it's, not, it's never a need, okay? So I use these words kind of flippantly. Okay, there's one more item from Abercrombie and that's this t-shirt with peaches on it. It says fruit market embroidered. I saw the strawberry version actually on social media and this fruit shirt is just very, very cute. It would go really well with my colors. I have some orange earrings that are like literal oranges and I just imagine this being like a perfect little tee for summer that could be worn to work as well. So momentary want, a black menswear inspired vest. So this is on my list for concert black wear. And again, this is not like a specific item, right? This is just an oversized menswear inspired vest. So I could probably thrift this. I would love to get one that's purchased in person so I could try it on. There's no rush, but I do think this is gonna stay on the list. I do feel like it would lend like a more trend forward look for my concert wear. For a long time growing up, I used to just wear whatever my mom got for concerts. I was in orchestra as a kid. And then like when I started college and early professional work, I felt like concert black was like not part of my style. It wasn't stylish. So I didn't prioritize getting clothes that I felt really me in. It was just like whatever's black, whatever's like on sale, whatever's formal enough. And I started recently getting clothes from brands that I like. So I have like the black suit from Jerf Avenue. So I really like the fit. I have the favorite pants and the blazer. I have some tops from Cezanne. So again, like two of my favorite brands. And I really feel better about like representing myself on the stage as far as like my personal style while still being formal enough. So that's been fun and adding fun accessories as well, jewelry, belts, um, shoes. And this vest I feel like is the next step of like having a small update to my concert wardrobe. Okay, last but not least is from the brand Damson Matter, which again is having a huge trend moment lately, especially their leopard items. So like the leopard jeans or pants and then the gilet vests, they call them gilets on their site. I was watching a trend video from the creator Alexa Sunshine 83, again, name twin Alexa. So I think this was from the video of trends that she was interested in for spring. And she was talking about this brand and their gingham vest. And I was intrigued enough to go look, which was a huge mistake because I saw this navy blue checked vest. And this feels like it's ticking so many boxes for my wardrobe. It's like in my color palette of the dark navy. I have a vest in my spring capsule, but it's just a little bit wrong for what I wanted it for. Like I thought I could layer it over things and add an element of interest. And it kind of doesn't really belong in this capsule anymore. But this navy checked vest is something that I really, really, really want. And I find myself like trying to think of all these loopholes of like, oh, maybe that could be another Mother's Day gift. Maybe I should get it because it's probably going to sell out. All of their other vests are completely sold out. Like I said, they're having a massive trending moment, this brand. Um, they're supposedly sustainable, which is nice. This is just a dangerous piece for me right now. So I'm really, really, really just trying not to allow any loopholes for buying this item. So more on that later, check back in with me. I'm a little bit worried for myself on this one, so you could be worried for me too. Okay, this was the last item. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna break down and I'm gonna have a vulnerable chat, right? So buying clothes is not a life or death matter. It's not even like, you know, it's, it's a sustainability issue for sure. And the health of the earth does depend on our consumerism levels. And my behavior last year and in years prior needed to be changed, right? It needed a radical change. I was shopping way too much, shopping way too much impulsively, buying things on whims and then decluttering. And I did declutter responsibly, you could say, by reselling most of those items. So I needed radical change. And so far, I feel like I've been doing okay. Um, my next video is probably going to be the things that I bought so far this year. So if you want to see if I've been doing okay or not, you can tune into that. But I feel like I've been doing okay. And regardless, it's been a dramatic change from the years past. So the no buy year is already helping me. So that's great. 
buying clothes does bring me a lot of joy in adding to my wardrobe and expressing my style. And there is a special feeling from finding that piece or a piece like this and then receiving it and styling it and feeling like that small update to your wardrobe and that enhanced expression of style. So I just don't know if I'm ever gonna be that person that never buys new clothes. I just don't know how sustainable it is to rely on a complete no-buy year to change my habits when I really need to be thinking long-term and like how I'm gonna be treating, wanting, and buying things. So one of my goals going forward is that I've noticed that many, many, many of my wants come from consuming content online and on social media. And most of them have actually come from content that has been designed to make you want something. So I'm not calling out like individual creators for talking about trends and like making me want something that's not their fault or intention. But when I see a video that's called spring trends, I can kind of read between the lines if I'm thinking intelligently and realize I might see this and want something off of this video because it's new trends that I haven't seen before. So I might not have exact items. It might be brands that are creating new products to want. So that is danger, danger, danger zone. And then same, like if you're scrolling on social media, you know if as soon as you open up those apps, you might find something to want. Another, another place where I talked about starting to want things was from those literal articles about spring trends. So my mistake was probably opening those articles in the first place. And then like my mistake before that was setting up my algorithms to think that I was interested in seeing those articles. So I think I really just need to stop clicking on those, stop consuming those, really think carefully before I open a YouTube video. Because while I watch those trend videos and outfit videos and product videos for entertainment, if, I, if it makes me want something as much as I want this vest, then we're having problems. And I don't wanna to have to fight off wanting things for this whole year. And that's not to say that I'm gonna buy the things that I really, really, really want, but that's to say that I don't want to put myself through the mental gymnastics and the emotional gymnastics of seeing all these things and not buying them. So the solution is to not see the things. It's not to buy the things, but it's to not see the things in the first place. So going forward for the month of April, just to focus it down a little bit, for the month of April, I'm gonna be very careful and conscientious about what media I consume. So send me all the no buy energy, send me some philosophy, send me the getting off your phone, doom scrolling, stop doom scrolling content. I love to see it. I'll watch it. I like to listen to these on my drives to work. It kind of like a podcast. I like to have the voice in my head. That is everything on my list of things I wanted to buy in March, but didn't. And with that, I think we're going to wrap it up because this is already a very, very long video. I will see you in the next one, again, that'll be all the things that I bought so far in my no buy year. And you can be the judge of whether or not I failed already. <laughs> Bye for now. It does feel like there's something coming out of my nose. So excuse me while I, oh, okay. <clears throat>